Ever wondered how we literally leap to the skies in switchless runs? Well, wonder no more, as today we'll be teaching you about the wonders of displacement jumps, sponge ball displacements, and vertical momentum storage. What exactly is a displacement jump, you may ask? Well, if you run this game or have seen runs, you should already be familiar with a very important example. The trick used to reach the final boss trigger is actually the same fundamental concept we use for all the insane jumps. You may have also seen it happen in an umbrella jump or a note jump. So that's cool and all, but how exactly does it work? Well, when you break it down, it's actually very simple. In Battle for Bikini Bottom, your jump height is calculated based on the movement of the platform you are standing on. That is, if the platform is moving up a bit, you go a bit higher. Or if it's moving up very fast, you go a lot higher. So what about the note jump? The note never moves up, right? Or does it? What's actually happening is when the note gets reset, that counts as instantly moving up that very large amount of units, so you can actually get a massive jump through this large displacement. Now that you know your jump height is tied to your platform displacement, how do we exploit this like we do in the runs? Well, there's two main concepts we'll go over, sponge ball displacement storage and jumps, and vertical momentum storage. Let's start with sponge ball displacement. The sponge ball is important because it can actually store your transformation position on a platform and give you control over what the displacement you end up getting is. This is most notable on platforms that move on a cycle, like flying tiki's, the copper platforms in downtown, or the floating platforms in the hub to name a few. When you transform into the sponge ball, your initial position gets saved at the exact location the transformation finishes. You can then wait for the platform to move, and once you pop out, the game will try to update your position to match the new position of the platform. So, for example, here in the hub, the platform moved up and to the right since we transformed, so when we pop out, we will also move up and to the right. Here in downtown, the platform moved up as well as tilting up, so the point we transformed at moved from down here to up here, so we will be displaced up that amount of height. This works anywhere we have a sponge ball on a platform that can move after we transform. So, now that we have our displacement, all that's left to do is jump as it happens. And to do this, you just press B and then A the next frame to pop out of your sponge ball and jump, and boom, you're in the sky. This hand movement can take a while to get used to though, so I recommend you practice this a lot before trying it runs and you'll just eventually get it down. If done right, you'll go soaring straight into the air. However, if you press A early, you won't jump at all. And if you press it late, you'll jump, but it'll just be a normal jump. So you can use that to adjust and perfect your timings. So how exactly do you make these displacements go into other levels? Well, just warp, lol! Okay, but really, you actually just need to pause on the frame the displacement occurs and then warp. So for a sponge ball displacement, instead of pressing B then A, you'd press B and start. Or for an umbrella jump, you'd just set it up, but instead of jumping, you'd pause on the frame, so it'd kind of look like this. Once you're paused, you just warp to the area you want to go, making sure you have control immediately, no cutscenes are going to be in the way, and then jump on the very first frame the game accepts input. This timing may seem very difficult, but luckily you can make it easier depending on your circumstances. Xbox players have it the easiest, as if they unplug their controller during the load, the pause menu will pop up instantly as they spawn in. Then, by pressing B then A like you do for a Spongebob displacement jump, you can buffer the first frame jump no problem. GameCube and PS2 players have it a bit harder. There's no controller disconnect prompt for them to abuse, sadly. However, they do have a lot of lag on the load, so they have about a fifth of a second to buffer the jump. So what I like to do for that is I split as I warp and look at my timer to try and gauge when I need to start holding A. Well, that's about it. Hopefully that covered all your super jumping needs. Happy switch listening, see you around, as always.